fears. God, our sins, my Lord Jesus. God, uh, things that we're not sure of there is sin. God, if we get confused with, my Lord Jesus. God, Jesus, whatever it is, my Lord. God, that we would just come into the river of your presence and rest. God, and to know and to have the assurance, Jesus, that you're not there to point a finger, my Lord Jesus, but God, that you're there to embrace. You're there to, to love. You're there to heal, my Lord Jesus. God, you're there to set free and deliver, God. Lord, I pray that we would be a people, Jesus, who would hunger after your word, my Lord. God, just like we, we hunger for that physical food, Jesus, that we would hunger even more for that spiritual food, my Lord God, your word. Jesus, bring us back to that garden, my Lord Jesus, God, when we used to walk with you hand in hand, my Lord Jesus. God, we just thank you so much, my Lord. God, we just ask that you begin to strip us down, my Lord Jesus, God, so that we're, we're naked and exposed, raw bones standing before you, my Lord Jesus. God, that you would clothe us with your righteousness, your holiness, my Lord. Jesus, that we would literally be able to see heaven opening up for us, Lord. And mm -hmm. God, that we would straight up dive in. Lord, I pray that this morning for each of your babies who are here under the sound of my voice, my Lord. My God, I pray that you will have your way. And our God's baby said, Amen. 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 God, may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have some of our uh, church family traveling to PA, to VA, to... Uh, uh, N.A. and N.W.A. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. We, uh, it's absolutely awesome, but uh, we're just praying that everybody is safe and sound in their travels and that they have an awesome, awesome time. Guys, man, we're, I'm blessed and excited, man. Uh, we have our wonderful sister Gretchen out there. She was in the house of God with us, man. For those of you who don't know and or you may remember, but she led uh, worship with us for years. So to God, the Lord, for that, man, and uh, the Lord. Uh, well, we won't even call it the Lord. We're going to say they decided to move to, uh, <laughs> to PA. All the PA is God's country. Praise the Lord. Pittsburgh. Hallelujah. Come on, Seth. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Washington, D.C. is the devil's country. Oh, my God. Uh, Washington, capitals, and I guess other regions. But anyway. But, um, uh, also, man, where is Miss Stacia at? Um, she's out with the baby. She disappeared. Stacia is also with us, man. If you remember Stacia, she was she is. And, and look at little baby Ethan. Hallelujah. If y'all remember, he has a miracle baby. Man, yeah. praise the Lord. He is three years old now. So it's just, it's just that's why you do a pod for me. Uh, just, just like his mom. Praise the Lord. But, so, yes, amen. But we are just blessed and uh, excited about that, man. Also, the 15th. Um, but two Sundays from now, now we're going to have a, a little dream team meeting after church. Uh, we just want to get the group together with a group of people, man, who uh, who desires to see the church prosper for the kingdom. Amen. Not for source church, but for the kingdom. Amen. So things that we could do out in this community. Praise the Lord to uh, to introduce people to Jesus. Now, if they come to the church, awesome. If they go to another church, awesome. If they just develop a walk with Christ, that's the main goal. Yeah. Amen? So we're going to have a meeting next week, or in two weeks from now, <laughs> to, uh, to begin to build a team that will come up with creative ways that we can do that. Um, the, the word is always the same, but yet it's always changing. Amen? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so too do the ways that we have to begin to reach people. Yeah. We can't reach people with yesterday's ways and expect people to live in it today. Amen? Amen. So we're super excited about that. Amen. I pray, man, that you guys have had an awesome week. I know for me and my family, we have. It's, it's been a good week, busy week, but, uh, but it's been awesome. I know that you guys had an awesome, awesome time last week with my pastor, Pastor Steve. Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. And I know that I've had heard nothing but amazing things about about his sermon. So I am stoked about that. The way you guys have been fed has been incredible to hear. And uh, one thing I love about them, man, is they are always willing at a drop of a dime to uh, to step in and to come and feed us. Yeah. Right? So that just shows, that, again, first and foremost, how much they love the Lord. But second of all, how much it is that they actually love us. Amen. So praise God for that. Two things I just want to share with you, man. Proud, proud dad moment, right? <laughs> 
So uh, um, the other day, what was it, two nights ago, um, I pulled a car over and uh, um, I get up to the, as I'm walking up on, uh, on the car, he check the back windows and blah, blah, blah. Well, the guy rolls down his back window and there's this little girl, she's probably about three, four, five years old, and she is just cheesy. Right? Like she's so excited that dad just got pulled over. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, she just got so excited when you turned your blue lights on. You know, cops, cops, cops. And like, she's not understanding that it's up to the expense of that. And uh, so I, I keep these uh, um, chase dogs in my car. And uh, uh, so I'll give them out to kids. Generally, I, if I go to a call, it's a, a sucky situation for a child, then I give them a little stuffed animal because stuffed animals make everything better. Yeah. And uh, so when I came back up, I gave her a stuffed animal, right? So she was just like super excited about that. Well, then fast forward, fast forward, man, till about two o'clock in the morning, I pull another car over, and as this, as I'm walking up to this car, this lady sticks her head out, and she said, "I just got pulled over in Nags Head, and they arrested my husband, but they told me that I could drive with my expired tax." I said, "No, honey, I'm gonna arrest you now." No. I'm <laughs> Uh, I said, no, you're, you're fine. And uh, I said, actually, I, I pulled you over for speeding. But as I got to her car, the smell of marijuana was just like awesome. insane. So I hung out there for a little while. <laughs> so, so, so I'm talking to her. I said, so what happened? And she said, you know, I had my husband had some, uh, and she had two kids in the back seat. She goes, I said, yes, ma'am, I can smell it. And I said, they did it all. And she said, they did. So I went back, checked with Max, said, sure enough, they seized everything from the car, and they arrested him. Well, the little girl in the back seat was just terrified. Oh. Right? I mean, think about it. She just saw the police cart her daddy away. So I had another one of my dogs, so I brought it up, and uh, I gave her a dog. She stopped crying. She was super excited. So I, I, I say that to tell this story. So I'm sleeping yesterday morning, and Grayson comes running in, and he jumps on the bed, right? He's like, Dad, Dad. And he goes, uh, Mom shared with me what you did with those dogs. <laughs> and if, to understand this, Grayson is obsessed yeah. with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, uh, um, I'm going to get my dogs together oh, so that you can continue to give them to little kids. Oh. Bust my heart. So as I'm getting ready to leave for work, I'm like, man, hopefully he'll forget. He <laughs> sent me out of the house with 15 dogs. <laughs> so he tries to, and I, so I come up with the excuse. Buddy, daddy's, uh, mommy's got to wash them. You know, you guys have been playing with them, so we don't want to give them to other kids if you guys have been playing with them. So he goes, well, let me just give you one. So he runs in and brings his favorite dog, Aww. right, and brings it to me to give to some little kid. And, and that just rocked my world as a dad. You know what I mean? I was like, man, Cindy's doing something. <laughs> just absolutely awesome, man. But I just wanted to share that with you. We're going to jump right in, because normally I'm like talking crap about my kids. So. <laughs> but uh, we're going to jump right in, man, to our uh, sermon series that we have been in called uh, uh, The Unoffendable Heart. And we have been talking about uh, ways for us to become to live that unoffended lifestyle in a uh, society, in a time in our, in our world right now that is so offended about everything, how we can actually live that unoffended lifestyle. We're going over four things, why four things, because there's four chambers with inside the heart. So last week we talked about uh, expectation. We talked about how we can become so offended when our expectations are shattered of people. Right? We put an expectation on somebody that they can't live up to, and then when they don't live up to that, man, we are crushed, we're offended, we're upset, we're ticked off. So we talked about that last week. Today, I want to talk about justice. And it's kind of cool because, uh, uh, you know, being in, in law enforcement, you kind of think of justice as just one type of a way. But truth be told, first and foremost, as a man of God, I'm going to seek spiritual justice. And then second of all, uh, uh, with physical law, yes, physical justice. But what's so amazing to me about justice in the Word is it is far more than you could even ever think of that justice means. Now, we could all admit that each and every single one of us has been in a situation 
that we have desired, we have hoped for, we have prayed, we have needed, we have wanted justice for something. Right. right? I mean, each and every single one of us. When I was growing up, we lived on a street called Stillwell, and uh, out, out of Virginia. And it was called Stillwell because the people on that street stole very well. <laughs> <laughs> and it was called Stillwell. But, uh, and people on that street really did steal very well. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I had this bike, and it was a gray and white bike. And man, it had the, y'all remember back in the day when, when your uh, uh, spokes. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about that? He said trade was <laughs> No. But uh, do you remember how, how your spokes, you would have those things in your tires that would cover the spokes? Yeah, they were right. Man, it just looked, it just, like, you look rad on it. You know, like, you remember bring back the word rad when you were talking about this bike. And this bike was so fast. Right, and I feel like the Lone Ranger on it because like like nobody could even touch me. I was so fast on that bike, and and one day, man, I'll never forget. I woke up and my friggin' bike was stolen. Right, man, I was ticked. I was sad. I was tore slam up. So what does any boy do? He takes justice into his own hands. Yes. I went and told my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so my dad. Uh, praise the Lord, we were kind of new at the time on this particular street. So here comes this group of, of hardcore thugs. And as they're walking down the street, those bike stealers. And as they're walking down the street, my dad walks out and he had a 44 Magnum. Like with an 8 inch barrel. So my dad walks up to him and he says, uh, Go ahead, punk. Make my day. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> but, uh, my dad walked up to me and he said, Hey. My son's bike was stolen. And he said, and I don't know who did it, but I'm expecting my son's bike back here by tomorrow morning. And they're like, we have no idea who did it. It totally was not us. We'll see what we can do. Right? Liars. <laughs> so the next day we woke up, and lo and behold, my bike was back. <laughs> and then immediately, me and my sister were like best friends with every kid on the block. <laughs> wanted to be our friends. Like nothing was ever touched in our house again or in our yard again, right? Like, true story. But it's crazy how, like, like you, you would take justice, you take the law into your own hands, right? You try to seek your type of a justice. And, and when we do that, we are always okay with that. When somebody else does that, oftentimes we are offended by that or we're tore up by that. We just can't believe that, but yet when it's us doing it, we're okay with it. The word justice actually occurs over 200 times in Scripture. The Hebrew word for it is which actually means, now this is what's so cool, it actually means to act with kindness and fairness. So that's why I say justice according to the word is, is, is the same, but yet also so much more than what we just think of as justice. Justice according to God, the creator. It is to act with kindness and fairness. And if, and if you think about this for a second, justice is only justice if it's acted in fairness. That's the only way justice can ever be justice. If justice is acted upon outside of fairness, it is no longer justice but communism. Yeah. Right? So we have to begin to grab a hold of this. Justice, first and foremost, has to be defined and is defined by the Word of God. Then justice in, in, in modern day society is defined by what our state laws begin to deem justice to be. But we must still understand that it has to first be defined by the word of God. It is not defined by man's idea, man's opinion, what man wants and or thinks justice should be. Justice is only justice if it is the same for every single person. Yeah. That is the only time justice is truly justice. We see in scripture a man named Joseph. Joseph was an honorable man. He was a righteous man, a good man. 
But yet at the same time, this man Joseph never really had justice served to him in his life growing up. But yet, the same man who had injustice oftentimes handed to him was a man who sought justice. To Joseph, it didn't matter where you were from, it didn't matter what color you were, it didn't matter what sex you were, right? He was going to call you good for being good, bad for being bad, right for being right, wrong for being wrong. Whether he agreed with your wrong or not, he's going to call wrong for wrong and right for right. Unfortunately, in today's society, we don't live like that. We don't play by these rules. Unfortunately, color oftentimes plays a role. Sex plays a role. A family last name plays a role. Oftentimes, whatever side of the tracks it is that you come from plays a role. And what I want to do just real fast is I want to right a wrong that is oftentimes taught when Joseph is being talked about. And, and the, the, the wrong that I want to write is this. Joseph was not hated because he had a dream. We must understand that. Joseph was not hated because of the dream that it is that he had. He was hated because he was a righteous man who sought justice. Joseph was hated because he was a man who had character. And character in God will always uh, 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 cause competition. When your character begins to be developed in Christ, competition is going to come against you from the enemy. And what we need in a dreaming world, right, as, as God gives us this dream, what we need is character. Why? Because it is only going to be your character that's going to then make this dream even become possible. Every single one of us dream. And every single one of us has a dream. But not every single one of us has godly character. And it's going to be the godly character that's going to cause the godly dream inside of you to actually come alive, to come into fruition. So before these, these brothers of Joseph heard the dream, you can actually look in Scripture and they already hated their brother. They hated their brother because he sought justice. He acted in kindness and fairness. And they did not. They hated their brother because he had character. And they did not. And the amazing thing I love so much about my God is, my God is a God of justice. We see that in scripture. Meaning that my God is a God of kindness and fairness. Right? Always. And here's the amazing thing. Any one of Joseph's brothers could have been a dreamer just like Joseph had they chose to do so. Any one of Joseph's brothers could have had godly character had they chose to do so. God didn't just give Joseph godly character and punish his brothers for no reason. They chose not to have godly character. They grew up in the same household. Have you ever noticed, man, how sometimes you can have kids in the same household and one is absolutely awesome and the other one's a hellion? Amen. <laughs> 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 and generally, if it's a brother or a sister, it's the sister's wow. girl. <laughs> yeah. right. Yes. Yours truly, <laughs> yours truly was righteous. Holy all the time. Oh yes, ma'am, to my mom. Yes, sir, to my dad. What do you guys need? Oh, and my sister's out partying her life away. Right? Just absolutely disrespectful. And I was like, Brandy, please stop this. I completely get how, you know, my mom would cry herself to sleep. My dad would volunteer to go to wars. Just to get out of the household. I get it. <laughs> but, oh my God. But, but it's crazy, man, that, uh, that you can have that. But yet, we see that any one of these brothers could have had the same characteristics as Joseph. The problem, though, with them is the same problem that we have even more than ever before in our society is people don't actually want to do right. They want to be perceived as doing right. Yeah. But they want to do whatever it is that they want to do. 
many organizations, many movements, many people on both sides of whatever political team that it is that you ride for. Many don't seek justice. They want to bully. They don't care about justice. They care about being perceived as being right at no matter the cost. And here's the thing. Oftentimes, those that bully don't pay the cost. We, the people, do. Right? So it's absolutely insane. We end up paying, not them. And we will find that in life as we begin to have this characteristic built up inside of us as we begin to seek the Lord, we will find in life that some of those people who you thought were with you are actually in competition against you. And it's crazy. We see in Genesis chapter 37, it says, So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, uh, a Canaan where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When, uh, oh, uh, uh, when Joseph was 17 years old, uh, he often tended his father's flocks, and he worked for his uh, half brothers. So now understand that like, this is uh, not just are you having siblings growing up in the same house, but now you have this blended family. And uh, so these are his half brothers. Joseph reported uh, to his father some of the bad things that his brother was doing. Right, so his brothers are doing these bad things, and here's Joseph, and he comes and, and gives a report to his dad. Now, I know what some of y'all are thinking. Well, he's a snitch. Snitches get stitches. Moles end up in holes. Come on, somebody. Right? I get that. But however, we have to make it clear, man, that this is not the situation here. This is, this is the family business, man. This is, this is Pop's name. Come on. And we have to make sure that what it is that we're doing is top notch. See, these brothers wanted everything for doing absolutely nothing. And they were lazy. Joseph has this dream. Uh, ultimately, in his dream, man, he's, he's uh, seeing how, how his brothers are going to be bowing down to him and how he's going to be the ruler. And just like, just like any young brother, man, you're going to share that. <laughs> right, well, I have this dream. Y'all might bully me now. Y'all might talk junk to me now. But here, Sue, you're going to be bowing to me. Right? So you can imagine, I would imagine, although he had godly character, he also struggled because he's human. Right? As we all like to say, praise the Lord. The Lord knows my heart, and that should scare you. <laughs> but, but I know if I was in that situation, I would almost be boastful about that. That's why the Lord don't give me dreams. <laughs> right? Because that Lord is God would never shut up. <laughs> so as he begins to share these dreams with, his, with their brother, man, it's just antagonizing them even more. And then on top of that, we see, according to Scripture, that, that Joseph, uh, Jacob loved Joseph the most, which is beat up. And I lived that. My, my oh, sister was loving yeah, yeah. But you can't have both. But you can't have both. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so we see that he gives them this, this coat of many colors, right? And, and that just antagonizes them even more, develops even more of a hate for their brother. <clears throat> And, and so they just, they just cannot stand this man. And it's sad because the man they cannot stand is their actual own brother. Yeah. And here's Joseph, who's doing ultimately what a son should do. He's doing ultimately what it is that his dad is asking him to do. A man who, who, because he did this, his brothers ultimately kidnapped and, and plan on killing. And then when they're like, ah, okay, maybe we won't do that, uh, 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 let's sell him into slavery. Right? So they sell their brother into slavery. Now, some of you probably wanted to sell your siblings into slavery, but praise the Lord, you didn't do it. But these guys <laughs> actually did it. Here's Joseph, a man who, who had injustice done against him constantly, by those who should have loved him the most. But yet, here's Joseph, a man who never developed an offendable heart. Why is that? How is that? Because his character was so lost in the Lord. 
He was a man who pursued justice, not revenge. And here's what it is that we have to understand, church. As our character grows in Christ, so too will our level, level of competition with others around us grow. And when that begins to happen, uh, what I'm talking about is not the type of competition that you're going to have with me if we get into anything. <laughs> right. If you tell me at the same time, if you say, man, I have to go to the bathroom, I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom too. It's going to be a race <laughs> to the bathroom and then who can finish first. <laughs> right? I'll beat you. And, <laughs> Everything is a competition, right? Like, it's absolutely insane. And, and real talk, this is what's crazy. Sometimes I'll, I'll be in my patrol call and I'll hear one of my partners pull something and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, you got one? I'm going to get you with one. I got ticket, yeah, but I'm going to pull you. You know what I'm saying? And then when I get to dinner, I'm like, how many did you pull? Oh, oh really? Try five. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? It's just crazy. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> like, everything is competition, man. And, it, and it's crazy, but this is a competition that, that I'm talking about, man, that the, that the enemy is going to send you that's going to begin to develop a competition with people that they're going to begin to despise you. They're going to hate you. They're going to want to see you fall and fail. They're going to want to see you not in freedom, but indeed in slavery. And this is what was taking place with Joseph's very own family. So my question to you is, when this happened, when injustice is done to you, how are you going to facilitate the hate? Like, like, like when that is straight up in your face, straight up done to you, how are you going to facilitate that hate? Are you going to be one of a Joseph type of character and still stand for justice, godly justice? Are you still going to still going to pursue? Are you still going to seek justice to act in kindness and fairness? Or are you going to flip the script and act like that? Right, like this begins to to truly show us our character. Because we see, man, in, in Scripture, man, uh, Isaiah 117 tells us to learn to do good, to seek justice. That we have to learn to do this, right? Like, you don't have to learn to be bad. Right. But we have to learn to do good. We have to learn to seek justice. And the only way we do that is not in the flesh, but it's in the spirit. By surrendering to the Lord and allowing him to, to develop his characteristics inside of us. So when you think about your characteristics, are you one who seeks justice? Are you one who pursues godly justice? Yeah, I think so. Okay, then let me explain to you like this. To pursue justice means that you are looking for ways every single day to be fair and kind to those around us. Now let everybody in here repent. <laughs> right? Like, like we are looking for ways. Some of us stumble upon ways. Let's just be real. You're not looking for but you trip into it. And then you think you're awesome and you're posting it on Facebook <laughs> of what it is that you did trying to get likes, right? When the truth be told, you weren't looking for that. You just took advantage of it. And praise the Lord. I'm talking about those who are seeking. To seek means you go looking for. So are you looking for ways to Pursue to seek justice, to act in kindness and fairness. And in life, man, we are going to quickly realize that we are only going to be as big as the hate that it is that we tolerate. Right? If you tolerate no hate, 
Well, the man, truth be told, you're not that big because you're just responding just like them, so really you're no different. We get so upset at, at this thing or that thing and this person or that person, this movement or that movement, when all we're doing is responding the same way that it is that we're getting ticked off because they're responding. Come on. Mm -hmm. And it makes absolutely no sense, but unfortunately, that's where we are in our society. Now, for me, one thing that I despise is being tailgated. <laughs> <laughs> I hate with a passion being tailgated. Amen. I want you, if you are tailgating me, I will take the car accident. I will slam on my brakes <laughs> yes. just to prove a point, right? And, and as things, because now it's a competition. Right? Oh, you want, you want me to move out the way? Oh, honey! You should have said so. Right? <laughs> and the other day, man, well, well, me and Boo Kitty are going up the beach, and real talk, this lady was just about in the back of our van. And I'm getting upset, and Say's like, babe, and she's cool, calm, and like, she'll just, don't even worry about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a good, good father. <laughs> and I'm like, highway to hell. <laughs> just insane. So, so, so what does a man do? Well, obviously, you have to peer out the back window with the desk there. Yes. <laughs> Right? And she's like, knock it off. And I'm like, I will not. <laughs> right? So I'm just staring at her. And eventually she kind of backs off. So then in your mind, you're like, sure, I won. <laughs> that's right, that's what I thought. And then what do they want to do? Then they want to begin to try to pass you. And I told Tony, I said, oh man, I wish I was driving. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, but you're not. <laughs> and so I'm getting ticked off, and as she comes up beside us, what do you do? Well, now you have to do the death stare yeah. out the passenger door. <laughs> and you just like just start acting like all crazy. And, and as she's passing us, she's not even looking over at us. And I'm like, you better look over at me and see my face that I'm mad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she does it. And Simi's getting upset. And I'm like, hey, why are you upset at me? I'm not the one tailgating. <laughs> it was her. She's the bad person. <laughs> and and her, her response got me because, like, like real talk, at that moment, I had an offendable heart. <laughs> right? <laughs> And unfortunately, I was almost embracing the the uh, heart. But but she said she said to me her, her response got me. She said because she doesn't know better. But baby, you know better. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <told>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she got a first time. <laughs> But it's absolutely, and I was like, oh my gosh. So then you just kind of sit there and you pout for a few seconds. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you all take it. So we post one right back. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. I'm not going to name you. But right. you know who you are. <laughs> right? Like, like, like we do this. And it's absolutely insane. How often do we pay back gossip for gossip? 
hey, you know what so and so said about you? Oh, oh yeah, well, let me tell you about so and so. <laughs> right? Like, it's insane, but we do this all the time. And if we could just be real with the Lord, first and foremost, then with each other, because we family, and it's going nowhere, church. <laughs> <laughs> It's good oftentimes to pay some of that. It does. <laughs> it feels good oftentimes to get that revenge. Yeah. When you slam on the brakes and they really oh, revenge no. you, it stinks because insurance has to get involved and your car might be messed up, but that initial hit, you're like, yeah! Oh my God! <laughs> right? Like, like, it's absolutely insane. But yet, we see Joseph in his life. And all of these things were taking place. He's being sold into slavery, and yet he doesn't begin to see. He doesn't begin to see a worldly justice. Joseph, man, is, 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 is a, a, a righteous man to the point where he's not willing to fall into sexual temptation. He's not willing to fall into sexual sin. And, and, and he's getting punished for this. And yet, he's not willing to seek revenge. He's not willing to, to blow up on man. He's not willing to, to expose. He's not willing to come back with vengeance. He's willing to seek godly justice. We see that in Genesis 42 through 44, he is now, man, top-notch fellow, second in command. There was a crazy famine uh, that just took place. There is no food, and lo and behold, who shows up to get food but his brothers? <laughs> what an amazing opportunity to get eaten. What an amazing opportunity to seek revenge. And what does he do, man? He begins to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they don't know what's him, right? They're like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, load them up with food. Hey, and by the way, put some silver in their bags and when they try to leave, stop them. And we're going to go to jail. What an amazing, wow. If that's me, I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Right? Like, like you sold me into slavery. Like, you don't know what you did in my life. Like, like I didn't know how father was. Right? And, and you did this. Now, I have the opportunity to get back. My goodness, church. So many of us have to admit that we so would have grabbed a hold of this. A beautiful opportunity for revenge, but yet then we're reminded in the word that it is not ours to revenge, but the Lord says that it is ours to seek and to pursue justice. It is ours to act in kindness and in fairness. And ultimately what happens is they bring the brothers back and he's like, are you kidding me? I'm trying to feed you guys and yet you stole from me? Oh my gosh, are you for I should throw you in a pit. I should put you in the dungeon. Uh, master, it was not like that. It was not. A, we don't know. How, oh, you don't know how it got. That's right. You borrowed those pants and somebody else put it in there. I gotcha. I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. Keep the youngest one with me. Y'all go back and tell your father. And I want every one of his sons to be back here. Uh, 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 bye. What an amazing opportunity, man, just to completely destroy their lives. And he could have done it, and nothing would have ever been said because nobody truly would have ever even cared. Yeah. Number two in command. <laughs> But the one who would have cared and the one who would have spoken to him is the one that he desired to worship. And that's the Lord. And the Lord never told him to seek revenge, but the Lord always told him to act in kindness 
and injustice. God has given him this amazing dream. And I have to begin to believe that in this dream that, that, that Joseph sees his brothers bowing down to him, it wasn't a bowing down in slavery. And I believe that, that as much as Joseph probably would have, would have dug that for a minute, his character overrode his flesh. And he began to realize that that is not the God-given dream that was handed over to him. So he knew that he had to act in kindness. He knew that he had to act in fairness. And here's the crazy thing, man, is, is as we seek Justice, as we pursue justice in everything, that, that kindness and that fairness in everything, in this life that we live right now, every single one of us has the opportunity to be a Joseph. Every single one of us has the opportunity to become a God dreamer, to live an unoffended, an unoffendable heart. Every single one of us in this room is going to have the opportunity to be a Joseph. There was going to be a time in your life, maybe it's now, maybe it's already happened, but there's going to be a time in your life that you are going to have this dream placed inside of you, and you are going to be so excited that you're going to express this God-given dream just enough to the point where people begin to hate you. People that you thought would never betray you, people that you thought would never rebuke you are going to begin to rebuke you and are going to begin to betray you. Then what? At that moment, will you still pursue godly justice or will you pursue the type of justice that is ultimately revenge? How are you going to respond? We've had people leave the church because I'm living a dream that the Lord has placed inside of me. There's going to be some of you right now that are so afraid to express this God-given dream inside of you because you're too afraid of how people around you are going to respond. You're too afraid how people around you are going to begin to treat you. But what we have to do is we have to get to this point in life where we stop being silent about this God-given dream because the dream was not created by you. The dream was placed inside of you by the Creator. Amen. And if we don't begin to express it, one with words, but most importantly with the way we live it, then that dream is forever going to be sidelined due to fear of people hating on you. Now, what I will share is it is crucial, absolutely crucial, that we share our dreams with the correct crowd and not the wrong crowd. Yeah. Right? That's where we have to begin to seek the Lord and, and ask. Sometimes when the Lord gives you things, man, it's not for you just to blast out right away. That's right. It's for him to develop that inside of you, and then he's going to give you the go to begin to talk about it. You share it with the wrong crowd, man, that can get you in a whole lot of trouble. Look at Joseph. <laughs> he shared it with the wrong circle, and he wound up in a whole lot of trouble. Now, praise the Lord that God used that trouble in such an amazing way. God didn't cause that trouble, but God used that trouble in such an amazing, amazing way. Joseph, with his character, stood for integrity. Joseph, with his character, man, was a righteous man, a holy man, a man who sought after justice. A dream landed him in a pit. A dream landed him in slavery. A dream landed him in prison. But that same dream landed him second in command. That same dream landed him with the opportunity to see to it that his family and his family's families were forever yeah. taken care of. Why? Because he pursued justice with an unoffendable heart. He sought after, he acted in kindness and righteousness, in kindness and fairness, without being offended, without the desire to have revenge. 
It's not ours to avenge. It's ours to seek in kindness and to seek in fairness. God used what took place to turn it around because that's what it is that our God does. And he was able to do so with Joseph again because he was a man who sought after the Lord. He was a man who sought after justice. He pursued justice. And every single one of us in this room, before we have been placed in our mother's womb, were given a God-given dream with a God-given purpose. But I also believe that each one of us with this God-given dream and this God-given purpose, if we choose to act in it, not if the Lord chooses to activate it, it's already been activated, we just have to choose to act in it or not. And if we begin to act in it, what we have to understand is there is going to be division. There is going to be Haters. There's going to be people who are going to be in competition. There's going to be people who are going to want to see you fail. How will you act when those very people are in your circle? Eventual. Are you going to act out? Don't be afraid to live out your dream. And at the same token, make no mistake, people don't hate you because you have a dream. People aren't offended by you because you have a dream. Everybody has dreams. The division, the competition, the hate is going to be activated when you stop being a listener and start being a doer of the dream. When you begin to move in seeking true godly justice, that's when the division is going to begin. And that's when it's so crucial, church, that we see to it that we do not develop an offendable heart. But a true man of God, a true woman of God will develop such character, will have such integrity for seeking justice that their character will be able to withstand any fear, any betrayal, and any division. I'm going to close with this. We go to uh, Genesis uh, 45. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have, have, uh, have, anyone, uh, uh, have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. Right? Like, like he's just kind of going at it. Blah, blah, and then he just loses it and starts crying, Man, get everybody out of here. But leave them. Now you can only imagine as his, his people under him are leaving there like, Oh, crap. Yeah. Right? And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph. Like, can you imagine the beauty as he begins to expose himself? I'm Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Now, you can only imagine. <laughs> you can only imagine what these guys were thinking. Holy crap. And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me. Guys, no worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, know you told me to fit those that a while for eight me. I know you told me to slavery. <laughs> Stop it. Right? Like, this is crazy. And he says, he says, because it was the same lie that God sent me ahead of you. Yeah, like, brothers, listen. Y'all's ignorance. Y'all's hate for me. Y'all's lack of respect and lack of love for me. And the Lord used that to save lies. Ultimately, you sinners, you're heroes. <laughs> right? You shall live in the... And now he's inviting them to live with him. 
Hey. Yeah, you sold me once. Come on, do that. <laughs> Everybody, get the man with the big hat. <laughs> but yeah. so, your children, and your grandchildren, and your flocks, and your herds, all you have. Like he's not just saying, "Look, I want to take care of that." Forget y'all. Bring me that. He's like, man, I want to take care of dad. I want to take care of y'all. I want to take care of your kids. I want to take care of your wives. I want to take care of your kids' and kids. And I want to take care of your flocks. I want to take care of your herd. Y'all will never go without again. Yeah. I will provide for you there. Because five years of famine are still to come. So like right now, he's like, hey, y'all get the bait if you want to. But there's still five years of this crap. Yeah. Hello. Right? So they're like, oh my goodness. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become dissolute. Dissolute. Nobody can say that. Think about that. He's like, man, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't take me up on this, everyone is going to suffer. What you thinking, brothers? Then he threw his arms around Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. They weren't even able to speak to the man. One, they were so terrified. And two, I have to believe, they were so freaking humbled. That this man, who had every opportunity to seek revenge at that moment, pursued justice, he decided to act in kindness and fairness. Boy, it would be fair if he would just boom, boom, boom. That's street justice, <laughs> but not godly justice. Godly justice should always override street justice. But godly justice doesn't always feel as good as street justice. Godly justice doesn't always seem as right as street justice. But I promise you this. If you have godly character, then as much as a struggle as it is, you will always end up on the godly justice side. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to be the one dragging you, enticing you, while your flesh is over here saying this, who is it that we're going to listen to? Holy Spirit with godly justice, or the flesh with street justice? The man of character, the man of God, showed us how uh, godly justice saved generations. Who is it? What is it? For lack of a better term, can you say by your godly character, seeking kindness and fairness when you walk out of this building? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. God, we praise you. We love you. We give you all honor and glory, my King. We would ask, my Lord Jesus, that you would begin to Rebuke us when oftentimes it seems as though for me anyway that my flesh would win and I would go street justice. God, help me to walk in that godly character that you have placed inside of me so that I always go for the godly justice. Even when my desire in the flesh is revenge. Help me to submit to the Spirit in godly justice. God, help me to always desire to seek in kindness and fairness. Help me, my Lord, to live with an unoffendable heart that every little thing, this thing and that thing, this person and that person, God does not offend me and causes me to be blind to the characteristics of you that you have placed inside of me. <clears throat>
that causes me to be blind to the person who is ignorant standing right in front of me, that I should not respond to them the way that they're responding to me, but my Lord, that I would act in kindness and in fairness. Yes, Lord, not to be taken advantage of and not to be a stepping stone for somebody, a mat for somebody, stand up for myself, yes. The Lord, to seek revenge, no. <coughs> Help me to be a man of God, to be a woman of God. Help me, Lord, not to act in hate, not to act in racism, not to act in ignorance, but help me, Lord, to act in kindness and fairness, in love. Help me not to mirror Frank, but help me to mirror you. Lord, I pray that people would not see my characteristics, but my characteristics are filthy and disgusting and undone. But Lord, your characteristics that you have placed inside of me are holy and righteous, true, always fair. Lord, help me to be a Joseph type of soldier for you, my Lord. God, that the places and the situations that you would put me in, my Lord Jesus, that, or that you would allow me to be in, my Lord God, that I would have, uh, begin to grab a hold of the advantage that we would have for generations to come just by simply seeking kindness and fairness in godly justice. Help me not to just see the picture, the situation in front of me, but help me to see the ultimate picture that, that in helping this individual can help generations to come, that in acting kindness to this individual can help generations to come, that acting in fairness in this situation can stop a domino effect of injustice. Help me to stand for what is right and what is godly. Help me to stand for the very things that you stand for, the very things that you stand for, the very things that you are. Help me, Lord, to stand for those. And God, when I begin to get weak and I want to take a step on the, the other side of the fence and I want to stand for, for this thing that is against you, this thing that, that, that is going to cause hurt, harm, or danger, Lord, Rebuke me not to punish me. Rebuke me not to, to, to hate me, but rebuke me to love me. Rebuke me to wake me up. That I wouldn't cause the death in someone else and or the death inside myself. But that I would always choose life. Lord, help us with that. If there's anybody here today who don't know Jesus, desire to know him, maybe for the first time, maybe for the millionth time. Write me a sin, simply open up your heart. There's no ritual, there's really no sinner's prayer, as we like to say, behind the pulpit. There isn't any of that. All you do is simply open up your heart. Confess with your mouth that the Lord uh, Jesus Christ is our Savior. Believe in your heart that he is the Son of God. And your name is written on him life. If that is you, let us celebrate with you today. As you commune with the Holy Spirit, as you are confessing Jesus to be your Savior. Now we welcome you into our family. We want you to know that we are here with you and for you. That you are never alone. Although sometimes you will feel like it, but you are never alone. Allow God to begin to create inside of you this godly character that will allow you now, from this point on, to seek justice, kindness, and fairness. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we praise you. And all God's baby said, Amen. Amen. Church, we're going to have our uh, prayer team come up, for those of us who are here. And uh, if you want prayer for anything, man, we would love nothing more than to pray with you. If you uh, uh, need to uh, chit-chat with anybody, man, then we have amazing people who would love to sit down and talk with you and help you through whatever.
whatever it is that you're going through. Uh, guys, we love y'all, but please remember that most importantly, Jesus Christ is madly and passionately in love with each and single one of y'all. You can drop ties and offerings on your way out. If you're online, you can do it online. But church, again, y'all have an awesome day. Act in kindness and fairness out there, and let's, uh, let's show some people some godly character. Amen? Amen.